Now the goal should be experience creating and finishing a project, you know, creating issues, fixing those issues and developing demonstrable expertise. It's more important that you build and complete something and less important of the specific tools that you use to build it. Hello, hello devs, and welcome to the Goobar podcast, where we talk about building great software and helping others do the same. Here we have short chats about things like software development, working in teams, and building your ideal career in tech. We aim to foster a sense of connection, inspiration, and continued learning so we can all continue to dream, learn, and create. You've watched some videos on YouTube, followed a few basic tutorials, completed a code lab or two, and you're thinking, now what? In this week's episode, we're exploring that question. I'm gonna share with you the best thing I think we can do when we're looking to improve upon a basic understanding of any new programming concept. And we'll chat through several important questions to ask yourself when building out your learning plan. This podcast is supported by awesome listeners like you. If you enjoy the podcast and you find this episode useful to you, please consider subscribing and leaving a review. It helps out the show and lets me know how to best serve you all with future episodes. If you have a question or like to suggest a future topic idea, I'd love to hear from you. Send an email to podcast at goobar.io for your question or topic to possibly be featured in a future episode. And now let's dive into today's topic. You've decided to learn some exciting new things. You've gone through some beginner tutorials, code labs, videos, courses, etc. Maybe you've started following relevant developers on social media and you signed up for every newsletter you can find. You're probably starting to feel like you're moving in the right direction. You're ready to take the next step. But what is the next step? What should you do to reach your goals? These are such important and universal questions. I get asked these questions all the time by new developers. And honestly, I ask these questions to myself all the time. Learning any new thing can feel overwhelming at times. There's so much to learn. There's conflicting information out there. There's an overabundance of learning resources. There's outdated learning resources. There's wrong learning resources. And then finally, we often don't know what we don't know. On top of all of that, we have so many opportunities these days with which to apply a new skill set. You know, do you want to work at a big four company? Do you want to work at a startup? Do you want to found your own startup? Do you want to be a freelancer? Do you want to build the next great open source project? You know, maybe you want to teach or create learning resources. There's lots of exciting opportunities out there, and they don't have a perfect overlap in the required skills. So again, where does that leave us? How do you build a learning path to reach your goals? And how do you start developing the required skill sets? Well, the first thing that you need is a clear goal in mind. After that, you need to create something in line with that goal. Do you want to be a freelance mobile developer? You'll need to be able to build and release a functional mobile app from start to finish. Want to build educational courses for software developers? You'll need to build a course. Want to start your own tech startup? You probably should get some experience running a business and or building a product. The theme here is that I strongly believe the best way to learn is by doing. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to set a goal. How can you decide what your goal is? Well, there's plenty of schools of thought around this with plenty of strategies, programs, tools. It's really a whole industry on its own. So I'll keep this pretty simple. Take some time alone. Grab a pen and a notebook and think about what you want your career and your life to look like. How do you want your day-to-day -day schedule to be? You know, some people refer to this as lifestyle design. Practice some mindfulness here and be honest with yourself. What do you enjoy working on? 
What are your strengths? Where is your genius zone where you feel most effective and most engaged? And what is going to support you financially? You know, unless you're fortunate enough to not have to think about money, you probably want to make sure that your career goals can support your lifestyle goals. And remember, this is all fluid. This isn't set in stone, and you'll want to regularly revisit your goals and reassess whether they're still valid and relevant. Once you have a strong sense of what you want to do, you're ready to develop your learning plan and free to start cultivating the necessary skills. Deciding what to build then comes next. Uh, I think the best way to develop relevant skills is to build something relevant. If you want to be a mobile developer, you'll need to build a mobile app. If you want to be a backend developer, you'll need to be able to build and probably deploy web services. If you want to be an instructor, you'll need to be able to develop learning objectives, a curriculum and learning materials. Picture yourself and the role you want or doing the work you want. That's what you need to be doing to take the next step and move from complete beginner to a practitioner. And now because we often don't know what we don't know, you might not be sure what the day-to-day work is going to look like like, um, at a real fine-grained level. And that's totally understandable, and that's totally okay and expected. And thankfully, the internet can really help us out here. You know, we can do some quick Googling to learn more about our desired role. We can reach out on social media to those doing the work already. Uh, This can be scary, but it also can be really rewarding and possibly even lead to more long-term mentorship. If you do reach out, have clear questions in mind, um, and especially have your goal and your your end game in mind to help guide the conversation and to help uh, avoid wasting anybody's time. Now, in this phase of the process, in this kind of goal setting process and, you know, picking a project process, uh, you'll want to deliver a clear sense of what the output will be. What's going to be your deliverable from kind of your learning path here? You know, is that going to be a web app, a book, a business plan, a mobile application? Be clear on what you want to create. You don't need to know exactly how you're going to create it yet or what tools you'll use to create it. That'll come next. But first, focus simply on the destination. Now, when you're picking the destination, be realistic about the scope of this work. Now, if you want to be an app developer, you don't need to recreate Uber or Instagram to develop the relevant skills. Do you want to create an online course? You don't need to build a 50-hour masterclass on Amazon Web Services. Your project would ideally cover the core skills needed but not necessarily every single skill or every topic you might run into. For example, if you want to be a mobile app developer, you're likely want some familiarity with databases. This doesn't mean that you need to build a project that includes every popular database solution as a means of demonstrating expertise with each individual tool. Familiarity with general concepts, with common pain points, and demonstrated ability to complete a project should be the core concern when building this sort of initial project. If you have four popular database solutions, pick one, build the project, learn the pros and cons of that solution, and someday you can go back and learn another tool if needed. If you're trying to decide between three different design tools, pick one and build a functional project. Do you see the theme here once again? Now the goal should be experience creating and finishing a project, you know, creating issues, fixing those issues, and developing demonstrable expertise. It's more important that you build and complete something and less important of the specific tools that you use to build it. Once you have a good sense of your goals and you know what type of project you want to build to develop the relevant skill set, it's time to start developing that learning plan. Your target project should be well-defined enough that you can begin breaking it down into smaller pieces, which honestly is a valuable skill all on its own. What problems will you need to solve? What tools or frameworks are available to help you? Start breaking down the project. Plan out smaller, 
individual supporting goals to work towards completion. Maybe add some deadlines for yourself if that will help keep you on track. This will likely feel daunting at first. You may only be able to think or plan at a high level or a couple steps ahead at a time. And again, that's totally fine. Focused on taking one small step towards completion and then another. Are you stuck on where to go next? Reach out to peers or to devs online. Are you stuck on how to complete the next steps? Again, reach out to other devs or to Stack Overflow or other relevant forums. As you tackle each individual challenge, you'll start developing the skills relevant to your ideal career. As you complete individual projects, you'll also be developing a portfolio that you can use to help get jobs, clients, funding, etc. Once you've completed a project, you can move on to another or revisit the completed ones to fix issues, apply new learnings, or to try new tools, patterns, and approaches. At this point, you'll be an active practitioner of your craft and will be well on your way in your life learning journey. Hopefully this episode has helped spark some ideas for how to go about tackling your next big learning goal. Remember, it's important to have a good idea of where you want to go, how you want your career or life to look. Next, you need to be clear on what type of work that ideal career will involve and pick a realistically sized, relevant sample project. From there, you can begin the work of breaking down your challenge into smaller pieces, asking questions, finding solutions, and working towards completion. This is ongoing work, but through that process, you'll gain the skills and experiences necessary to take the next step towards your goals and become you know, a full-on practitioner of your craft. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and be sure to subscribe for future chats about software development and career. And remember, if you have a question or topic idea, I'd love to hear from you, and you can send those in to podcast at goobar.io for your question or idea to possibly be featured in a future episode. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to dream, learn, and create, and I'll catch you all in the next episode. Until next time, devs. Thank you.